All right, we are finally set up live here in Las Vegas. Of course, you know I have to get stay hydrated with my Herbalife. I think it's about 103 degrees out here. So we're getting roasted, getting little sun. So I guess I'm just a big loser. 100 degrees in Las Vegas, Memorial Day weekend or whatever today is. I don't even know what today is, Tuesday. But we're still here doing our Facebook Live with you guys. Gonna go over a ton of things today. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get interrupted by some freaks walking by, which we already have several times already as I was trying to get set up, trying to find a spot where I can get some uh, reception, some internet here out on the street, right on the corner, Las Vegas Boulevard, outside of Planet Hollywood, across from the Aria Hotel. So we're gonna go over a bunch of things today. Today is all about the six packs. We get, I get questions about it all the time. How do I work my abs? How do I, I get questions, how do I, what ab exercise do I need to do? What do I need to eat? So we're gonna be addressing all that today. Summer's coming, so let's talk about the abs. Let's talk about the six pack. That's what today's focus is. You know, last week we went into the specifics about how much protein, carbs, fat it takes to get that six pack. But today, we're gonna go into the details, a little more into details, a little, a little further than just the numbers, the protein, the carbs, the fat. We're also gonna talk about which alcohols you could drink when you're trying to get that six pack. We're gonna talk about my top three six pack ab supplements, my top three six pack ab exercises, and we're gonna go into boxing a little bit and how that can help you with your ad development also. And then we're gonna talk about putting that all on display, all the hard work you did to get that, those, that flat stomach and the six pack. And to talk about our upcoming six week challenge finale party coming up. So you know I'm out here in Las Vegas, it's been a crazy, crazy fucking week, nonstop work, maybe a little bit of gambling, but mostly work, believe it or not. I had, had a chance to get to the pool maybe one time, that's it. Really didn't even get much of a chance to be outside a couple of times, some hikes and stuff like that. You know, the last trip we went, I went to San Diego, I had a photo shoot. That was when we were voted America's top trainer and studio. This Thursday, I had another professional photo shoot, promotional shoot, and that was awesome. Obviously, you always want to come in top physical shape for these, for these pictures. So a lot of discipline goes into, into preparing for these photo shoots. And, you know, this time was an additional challenge. As you know, the Russian and those two little monster kids are away over in, I don't know, fucking Moscow or somewhere. So, you know, I arrived in Vegas early, came a few days early, for y'all get here early, get settled in. So I had to maintain my nutritional discipline here before the shoot for a couple of days. You know, by myself, Las Vegas, Memorial Day weekend. Obviously there's, there's you know, the level of focus and dedication was a bigger challenge and that's what I wanted. I purposely wanted that extra challenge. Had to go on the flight, thinking about what I'm eating, limited carbs, limited hydration, just to get in top shape for the shoot. So the level of fo fo focus and dedication was, was a great challenge to really prove to myself what I'm capable of doing. And things that I'm asking sometimes our members to do, that's what my goal was this week. A lot of self-development, kind of doing it myself, putting myself through a lot of the torture that you guys have to go through. And that's what I've been doing this week out in Las Vegas, you know, to show myself what I'm truly capable of, especially when no one else is watching. Because you guys could do it when we're sitting there watching you and we're right in your face in the gym and with you in that training session, that one hour a day, but you're not in the gym those other 23 hours of the day. So that's kind of what I've been focusing out here on myself is what am I actually, how far can I take it? What level, what, how capable can I be when no one else is watching? So I was at fitness seminars, did a promotional photo shoot, high intensity workouts every single day, have not missed one day of working out, did hiking, rock climbing, team, team, building, team building exercises, networking events, visit, visited several local gyms all over Las Vegas area, trained at a high level MMA fight gym, my old, old trainer, Phil Dunlop from the Asylum Fight Gym, used to be in New Jersey, now has a gym out here in Las Vegas. So that was awesome. And this was all to work on my own self-development. That was the whole purpose for the most part of this trip. You know, I'm always on a quest to make myself better, become a, better, become a better version of myself today than I was yesterday. So if you want to be great at something, you need to be around greatness. That's what you need to do. You, need, you can't always be the best person in the room. You can't always be the smartest, you can't always be the strongest, you can't always be the fastest, the most skilled at whatever you do. If you're the best in the room, all the time, you're limiting yourself of your own, your own self-growth and your own self-development. So you need, you need to constantly take yourself out of your comfort zone, and that's where the magic is gonna happen. Surround yourself with people that are better than you, who have been there, who have done that, and try to learn something new, new from everyone you meet every single day. Surround yourself by people better than you in all areas and you're gonna greatly improve yourself in all those areas. You're gonna just keep, it's like iron, they say iron sharpens iron. You're gonna keep improving and getting better. For me, this is obviously always a challenge because you know I'm not a people person or to put it another way, 
I fucking hate people, okay? Everyone knows that. I, I just hate people. I hate everybody. So I think I'm getting a little bit better at this, and this is why I put myself in these situations, especially this week out here in Las Vegas, in tons of different situations, make myself uncomfortable, come out of my comfort zone, like attending these seminars with the top 1% of the fitness professionals and gym owners in the fucking world, like going off-road Baja driving with some of the coaches and other trainers, rock climbing, photo shoots out in the middle of the street in, in Las Vegas with the top trainers in the country, working out together, eating together, networking, and, and just fucking feeding off of each other's energy, ideas, success. You know, I don't do well at social events, if you can imagine. I don't really do well with, if there's people around, obviously. So, you know, I needed to put myself in that situation more often. And that's kind of what I was focusing on doing a lot this weekend, this whole week was that, you know, adapting and overcoming and making shit happen. Take some of your weaknesses, use that shit as a strength. Use that shit as a fucking superpower. Overcome that shit. Last night I trained at the Asylum MMA gym, like I said, with Phil Dunlop. Used to be my trainer in New Jersey. That was seven, eight years ago. And talk about not being the best in the room. This was an amazing fucking experience. Being surrounded by top level fighters and grapplers from the area, you know, getting knocked around a little bit, getting freaking choked, getting my arms snapped, but making me better in the process. You know what I mean? And, and not just better at, at fighter, at, at fighting or making me stronger or better fighting skills or whatever, better fighting technique. But I'm talking about in all areas, like, like staying humble and you know, showcasing massive respect for people around you, people that come into your, into your space, into your home, always trying to help those around you, sharing your knowledge and skills and expertise. You know, and, and I also improved in just basic fucking human interaction. You're sitting there, that doesn't get any more raw or any, any more human interaction than that, than someone trying to rip your fucking head off. Put it in a good way, it's awesome. They welcome me in, they're like family, never met any of these guys except for Phil brought me in, helped me out, you know, showed me a couple things, taught me tons and tons of techniques. Awesome workout on top of that. Sore as shit today from that. Obviously, I worked out in the morning yesterday before I went, then I went there at nighttime, so I doubled up. That's what I do in Las Vegas. I go to get, go work out, then I go get my ass kicked. But that's how you make yourself fucking better. Put yourself in those situations. Constantly improving, adapting, and overcoming, you know? I know I know here, you know, we, I wanted to kind of put myself, walking into that, that fight gym yesterday, I wanted to put myself into the shoes of all the new members that come into Peak Physique. I want to relive what it's like to walk into somewhere for the first time and feel that little bit of anxiety, feel a little bit of nervousness so it's fresh in me so I can relate to you guys when you're coming into the gym. Trust me, there's nothing more, more anxiety than walking into a, a fight gym that you've never stepped foot into in your life with a bunch of savages in there. You know, and humbling experience, awesome experience, had a ton of fun, got to get some aggression out, awesome workout. So you know, I know that a little more can relate to what it's like when you guys are coming into the gym for the first time. You know, I've already do know what it's like, but I want to kind of relive that. That's what this whole process has been like for me out here in Vegas is all this self, self work, self development, you know, improving myself, making myself better every day. I know we are, you know, at peak physique, but you need to have a, we, we call ourselves peak physique, but you need to have a never peak mentality. You should be never thinking that you're peaking, never thinking that you're at your best every day become more great than the day before. Never fucking peak means always striving for more, never settling, never getting complacent, and always trying to improve in all fucking areas of life. I only, I only made it to the pool once here in the week that I was here. It's been, the, the coldest it's been during the day here is 95 degrees. It's been over 100 degrees most of the time. I've made it to the pool one time, right? Because I had more productive things to do. Anyway, about the pool. So I went, I went to the pool one day, with a few of the, the world's top trainers, top gym owners. Obviously, everyone's in, in you know, pretty good shape. This is the day after the photo shoot, so I suppose I was still in, in fairly decent shape. So this was one of the only times I had an adult beverage while I was here. So there I am, trying to cool off, just stand there, networking with some of the other gym owners, and I hear at least on two or three occasions, whispering from little, little fucks around the pool, you know, comments about me, talking shit about me. People, I don't even know who they are. Some little, little, little fucking stooges. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, they're talking about, oh, look at, look at that steroid freak, or look at that asshole. Like, listen, you dumb fucks. You know, they, they talk about, like, you think, like, I think I'm better than them or something. No, I just went to the fucking gym. That's what I did. I go to the gym, and I have a little discipline. I need healthy. You know, when did it become cool to start making fun of someone or mocking someone because they're not a fat, sloppy fuck, you know? I leaned down to 169.5 pounds for this photo shoot. 
You know, it's called 20 years of hard work and discipline, you, you lazy, lazy fucks. Apparently, it's now the, a, a new type of fashion or a new social craze to be the, the fucking funny, fat, shit-talking kid. You know, obviously, I stopped giving a fuck what anyone thinks about me, especially some chunky, junk, chunkster, college fucking kid at a pool in Las Vegas on Memorial Day. It's not going to affect me at all, you know? This, this week, I've been asked so many times, why I wear two different color shoes, you know? So, first, I got the idea for my little monster two-year-old daughter. You know, she would always want to put two different shoes on in the morning whenever she went to school. She would not let you put two of the same shoes on. At first, I was like, you can't do that. That's, that's, that's stupid. You, you know, people are going to make fun of you or whatever. But then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. If that's what you want to do, then you can do that. Like I've said before, my son a lot of times wears his shirts on inside out and backwards. I don't care. That's what he wants to do. That's the way he wants to wear it. He can do it. It teaches them right off the bat. Don't, don't worry about what the fuck other people are going to think about. So now every morning as I put on my sneakers and I put on my two different sneakers and yes, I just bought two new ones, a new pair or two new pairs yesterday. Can't even get my leg up there because they're so freaking sore from that training session, but whatever, two different sneakers that I got. So every morning as I put those two different sneakers on, I'm reminded that I am me. I am me and I will do what I need to do and I don't give a